This is a step up from the Arduino Uno, which is based on our Mega 328P. This is a Sam D21, which is a Cortex M0 part that runs at 48 megahertz, which is so much more than three times the core frequency. On this, the, the peripheral sets on this part are, are far more powerful, yet we've designed it to make it easy to use. So coming off first step, you have a completely Arduino compatible board. That's great. Only 3.3 volts, but a lot of shields out there run 3.3 volts yeah. anyway, so not a showstopper. Okay, so you're developing your code. You want to step it up a notch because in order to make this Arduino Uno compatible, we actually have to detune it, right? Because we're going from a 16 megahertz 8 bitter to a 48 megahertz 32 bitter. D21 means it has USB host and USB device on this device. And this is why there's two uh, USB there's connectors? Two, so there's two USB connectors for a very good reason, as you astutely pointed out. One is for the native USB connection, either host or device to this board. The second one is to an onboard embedded debugger. You want to take your development to the next level, you now have full integration into Atmel Studio, which is our professional for free development environment. So now you can transition your prototyping stage to a full featured performance enhanced, size enhanced, with full breakpoint, watchpoint, call stack, debug visibility. For the users that don't want to use that, does this work with GDB? Yes, it does. Fantastic. The, the, this is a standard SeamSys DAP. Um, which is a standard protocol. It is not a proprietary protocol. This is already supported in OpenOCD because that's how Arduino, their environment, is getting at this board. We've, we've confirmed that. We are in no way locking out the ability to use our embedded debugger with any open source. This is meant to be accessible by anybody. The third bonus of this board is there's a header here that is not populated. So now we've gone two steps. We've gone one step, you've done your prototyping, your quick prototyping with Arduino environment. Then maybe you want to go to production or go to a higher level of performance with the C environment using Studio. The last step is to take your production board, populate that header, and now this turns into an embedded debugger unto its own where you can debug and program a target board based on a SAMD21. So you're getting three development environments in one. You're getting a Arduino Uno compatible board with higher levels of performance. You're getting a plug and play support with Atmel Studio 6. And you're also getting an embedded debugger to target your applications using the D21. Can you tell me what the six pin header is for? I'm used to seeing that for an ISP. Well, this six pin header is actually to expose a spy port on, on the D21. And that brings me to an important feature of the D21 and, and the D series in general. In a lot of cases, if you need an application and you need, let's say you need two UARTs and three SPIs and four I squared C's, that's not I squared C's, but let's yeah. just roll with it. You have to take a part that has got the lowest common denominators, and sometimes it's usually if you have two I squared C's, you get 15 UARTs. I don't want 15 UARTs, I, want, I just want two I squared C's. So what we did is we created a module called the CIRCOM module, or Secure Serial Communications module. So this module is configurable in a UART, or in an I2C, or in a SPI configuration. So what you're looking for is, how many serial interfaces do I need? I, I need one I2C, I need two UARTs, and I need one SPI. Pick a part that's got at least four CIRCOMs, and then you just allocate and configure those peripherals as such. On top of that, we have a what's called a almost a crossbar matrix switch where you can take the outputs of every one of these modules and almost arbitrarily assign it to any pin on this part. Wow. Which great. also simplifies routing. Again, there are some limitations on that. The, ice, the USB pins are not generally available. That's a custom file on those pins. But in the most case, you'll see this whole big muxing table. So it's almost like uh, one of those 50s diners that has a huge menu. It's almost too many choices to make. So, but we're, 
we're coming out with new tool sets to enable better, to make quicker choices on that board. So now the questions that are on everyone's mind, when can they get this and what will the price be? Um, I can't, so this was a joint uh, development venture between Atmel and Arduino. Um, we did a proto run of boards, we're going to have to do a respin. So hopefully in a few weeks we'll have definitive pricing and delivery for production runs. And okay. I wish I could tell you more, but... Um, the no, that's an honest uh, answer. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah, no, it's uh, because right now the the popularity it's lining up to make sure that when we get production lined up that we've got all the bugs out of this board and we're ready to roll. We don't want to disappoint and have to reship again. But again, I mean, I've been playing with this board for all of 48 hours. I'm very happy with what I've seen so far. So yeah, if people want to learn more about it, where should they go? Um, Primarily go to the Arduino website for now. They're the official release. You'll see some press releases in the a couple of weeks, hopefully, on availability, but even though it's a joint venture, Arduino still owns the, the ecosystem around it. I know that um, I have seen through the Arduino Basecamp projects that we are making excellent progress in getting the entire Arduino runtime library finished off for this board, at least at a, at a point in the runtime where it's stable to release. So, great. I've been pleased. It's been a very quick and excellent effort on both our parts. Thank you so much for sharing this well, information, so Bob. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you. All right.